uh, our new poll is going to uh, talk about this, um, about uh, colonization. So I want to take the next step. I want to take what happens on the island and give what is a bit of a personal review. So a lot of things I'm going to say will be uh, very familiar. But the aim is to point out something which uh, is a line of thought which has been coming up over the last five, six uh, years, uh, getting stronger, and which really helped me and also helped me to explain uh, why there's a lack of gigantism in rodents in the Eastern Mediterranean in the late Pleistocene. So I, I call it the insular paradox. Uh, these are the animals uh, that we like. Um, uh, Let's admit it, we also like them because they're, they're pretty rare. You have this uh, human, which is small and has a small brain. We have these ruminants with their short little cute legs. We have uh, a pigeon which turns into a turkey. So they're strange. But they are perfect because they evolved about 50 years ago. We talked about these animals as being suckers, degenerates, but that's not the way it works. People, uh, animals adapt to their environment and they adapt to the best of their ability. So all this is useful. All this has a reason. Perfect animals on islands. And yet, if you look at the last 10,000 years, we find that 255 mammals became extinct, and most of these were island inhabitants. We had the news uh, a month ago that another uh, animal, um, a melomis species, uh, became extinct, also on the island. Birds, even worse, over 500 species of birds, according to Sam Turvey, have become extinct, and again, most of them on islands. So here, here's the paradox. If you are perfectly adapted to an island, why is it so vulnerable? Amasini, uh, in 2010, with his co-workers, came up with a beautiful phrase, advantage of the resident. And I really wish I had known this phrase before, because it says exactly what I'm thinking about this. You are on the island, you're perfectly adapted. Some immigrant comes in. It's your island. You are adapted. That immigrant should have no chance to outweigh you. And still, we see that in practice, it works that way. Um, exotics on island are killing you. Now, I think you will agree uh, with me when we talk about island evolution that these are the three main points which we see back again and again. Uh, the absence of uh, mammalian predators on islands, the absence of competitors in the, in the classical work of Maria Colombo, Maria Colombo, she describes how elephants do not become very small if they have competition of uh, Ruminants, so, but if they are not there, a definition can take a far bigger step. These competitors are very important. And then, of course, there is the limitation of resources. Once you eat everything on an island, you have to wait till it grows again. Now, the peculiar thing is that two of these drivers, and that's why I put drive and quotation mark, are absences. And you cannot adapt to something that is not there. So what, what if there is no cat to, to uh, uh, eat you? If you keep your body the same way, nothing will happen. You will still be alive. Still, we all agree that these are important. But they are important because absence of carnivores gives a release. You are allowed to do different things and you will not be punished by being eaten. Absence of competitors offers opportunities. You can do things that before you could not do because somebody else is already doing it much better. But, and uh, also and when we talk about vulnerability, of course, these are very important points. If you 
let down your guard, if you're no longer adapted to predators, you will pay for it once the predators come back. And this is the story of the Staten Island Wren, which presumably the last population has been eaten by one particular cat, the cat of the lighthouse keeper. But the real driver, the real thing that makes island evolution and makes island evolution so similar on all islands, that all islands have to deal with the limitation of resources. You cannot go walk away because you're stuck on an island. In the mainland, you would. So, how to, what to do if resources are limited? Well, it's just like uh, housekeeping. You just make the most of what you got. And less is more. Big body size, okay, let, let's make it a bit smaller so that we can have a viable population that is not killing the island by eating everything. Why would we need long legs? Long, long, long legs, you have to make them and then they're only getting cold. So, let's have short legs. We don't need to run anyway. Uh, again, body size. A brain. A brain is very costly, costs a lot of energy. So, when you're on an island, you don't need a big brain. Anybody who feels so may now insert a Brexit joke. And then there, there's the rat. And that one comes bigger. So, with my animals, the ones that I like, apparently, more is more. You get bigger. Well, a quick lesson in ecological uh, expenditure of energy shows that we uh, have a fast and slow continuum and with, at the end, and two extremes. We used to call this R and K select, but for some reason we changed that. At the fast end, you invest in the species. It's the what happens if you have a high extrinsic mortality, life is a lottery, just get as many individuals out there as you can, somebody will survive. So, and if you have a low mortality, you can invest in the species by putting the energy into nice big individuals. Now, looking at all the typical characteristics of the uh, fast slow continuum, it's nothing that we can really work with as paleontologists, except the adult size. There's small adult size if you are on the fast end. If there's somebody out to kill you, stay small. <coughs> Don't invest uh, in that body because that body may be eaten anyway. On the other hand, if, there are, uh, if you are safe, make a big body and invest in years of nice living. It is correlated with the other characters, but you don't want to work that way. You want to see something of these other characters as well. And that has been happening over the last year. I said this is uh, something which is coming in more and more infection. And particularly Meg Kerner of the ICP has been doing important pioneer work in histological evidence. As you saw that in Neotragus, uh, enamel histology has a much slower build-up, about twice as slow as in uh, similarly aged, uh, similarly sized uh, goat. A late eruption of the uh, M3, and the M3 usually erupts at the time of sexual maturity. You know, it, it worked for me. Uh, I got interested in uh, girls, and two years later I had to go to the dentist to have my wisdom tooth removed. So, Apparently, that's something you can also see. So, yes, slow build-up, slow eruption, that fits the slow continuum. Uh, I had a great pleasure to work with Zurich colleagues uh, under the, uh, the leadership of Christian Kohl. We looked at some histologies, uh, including Dana Valerix, and we found in the bone five arrests of growth, which could be five seasons. Uh, five seasons, that's five years, pretty 
old age for a hedgehog and we just took one sample. So who knows, might have been even older. We see also the old age. And there's some other clues which we, we have already known for a long time, but take the elephant bird. Huge body, so he could uh, make a lot of eggs, but he doesn't. He makes the largest possible egg in the world, and thus he has a small litter, and he has a big baby. So he is on the slow end of the continuum. And we also know that many uh, island species are hypsodon, even if they are not grazers, as you would expect from this conclusion. Daniela Winkler worked on Miatragus and showed Miatragus badiacus. It's a mixed feeder. Still, it has immensely high teeth. Why? Well, if you live longer, you abrade more teeth. So, uh, that's a visit to the dentist I did not yet make, but some of you may learn from our experience that uh, later on in life you may well have to want to replace your teeth with something uh, more permanent. So, also in our unnaturally long lives, we see that it would be greater, better, if we were hypsodont ourselves. So, how does this work? Uh, I'm sorry for the time in the raw thing, although not on flowers, I must admit that. Uh, you get colonization of, of an island by a rodent. Once you get the colonization and you do not have the mammalian predators, you're only dependent on birds of prey, you will get overpopulation of the island. Leading to even more limited research, resources and starvation. Those animals that invested in themselves, the bigger mice, stand a better chance of survival. And this will continue. And actually, overpopulation is quite natural among rodents. This will continue till there is the balance in the system. However, such a balance is vulnerable because as soon as some other animal by chance can make the trip to the island, it again disturbs the entire system. It will again take out resources and also the big mice will suffer. And maybe that is the reason, if we look at islands, we're always talking about formal complexes. There's, uh, this is Crete, but you can say the same for, you can say the same for Sulawesi. Um, apparently, always there is a new chapter, and the vulnerability that nowadays has much to do with us introducing cats and rats and dogs on islands is something which is also already present in the past when we saw this change from one complete fauna to another and never a fauna which now and then happened to get another animal in there. So, concluding, uh, limitation of resources is a, a main driver, uh, a key factor uh, in insular evolution, taking it slow, the crazy, lazy island life, seriously easy going, that's the way you can get the balance and use the resources to the best and preserve the energy that is available. The vulnerability that we saw, 255 mammals, uh, well, about more than 200 island mammals destroyed, is there because of are letting down the defenses, we don't need them, we don't put energy in there, but also because whatever we do, once we are getting lazy fat specialists, we are vulnerable to opportunities. Thank you for your attention.